In today's video, I'm going to embark on a smaller challenge playthrough featured in the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion. As per your recommendation, I'm going to try and keep Glarther alive long enough for him to take out his aggressors. The challenge laid out is getting the paranoid Wood Elf through the city of Skingrad. He's to arrive at all of his enemies' homes and defeat them in combat, all while avoiding the hordes of guards coming after him. The most complicated part is getting him through it without attacking or aggroing onto anyone myself. I'm to play more of a guardian angel role in Glarther's life, but honestly, if you stick around, you'll see how all of this goes down. Before going any further though, you need to know that this playthrough is chaotic, messy, all over the place, and the guidelines slash rules laid out for this run are pretty blurry. There's a lack of structure, order, and organization when bringing this fetcher across town, and I try out unconventional means of meeting my goal. The end result may or may not be what you're expecting. This really is a video centered all around shenanigans and serves no greater purpose than that. So, with all of that being said, if you're here for a fun and entertaining time, let's begin. I'm not a violent person, but I can only be pushed so far. Many of us know who Glarther is and the plot surrounding his questline. If you don't know about him though, he's a paranoid wood elf who approaches you in Skingrad. He believes that certain citizens in the city are watching him. His quest has many different branches, pathways, and options for the player to experiment with. If you play by his rules, he'll ask you to observe three different NPCs in town. After doing so, he'll then ask you to assassinate them. This quest ends in someone's death, whether it's Glarther's or the NPC's, someone dies. One of the alternative pathways I mentioned in the beginning can happen as soon as you meet with him behind the chapel. By refusing to help Glarther, he'll begin to say even stranger dialogue and storm off. My enemies think I'm weak, that I'll never act. Could be the blades, they've always feared me. It must be the Marukati Selectives. All the evidence points to them. I'm not a violent person, but I can only be pushed so far. Following him across town, he slowly walks to his home and enters inside. By ascending up the stairs to his room, you'll see him pick up an iron battle axe and begin to walk out. This is where his rampage and my work begins. Glarther's first target is Bernadette Penelis, and lucky for me, she lives right across from him. We go inside of her home and march up the stairs. Finding her asleep on the second floor, Glarther takes out his battle axe and begins to hack away. Knowing how these fights go, I body block the doorway so neither of them can take it out into the streets. Did you think I would be your parent? I'm just warming up. Honestly, my aim in these games is horrible to begin with. Throw in the fact that Glarther and his opponents constantly dance around together, swiftly moving to whole new areas, makes it even harder to tag him with healing spells. For some background information, my character is level 1, but has a really ramped up restoration level. I'm using Convalescence, which is an apprentice level spell, and it heals the target for 15 points. Bernadette wasn't a hard battle for Glarther, and this was due to her lack of weapon and armor. The use of hand-to-hand -hand was questionable though, as she kept knocking him down, prolonging the fight. Soon, Glarther landed the killing blow, and that was one of three targets assassinated. Together, we moved on out of the house and walked the streets northeast. Wrapping around the chapel, Glarther and I hit the crux point for this entire playthrough. Like the omniscient super soldier he is, Dion would always intercept us on the north side of the chapel. He'd approach Glarther, the two of them would awkwardly stare at each other for a moment, and then the weapons came out. Quite obviously, there was a huge skill difference between the two of them. Dion had his armor set as well as a steel longsword, whilst Glarther fought in his pajamas with a battle axe. <laughs> It seems that as soon as Glarther commits his first murder, the town is on high alert for him. Dion always seems to be able to locate him, and the guards will soon aggro on sight. I was working overtime healing Glarther like crazy. Every heavy attack landed by Dion had me in shambles, as Glarther's health would drop by half. I didn't really have to worry too much about Magicka cost with Bernadette, but with Dion, my bar was going down faster than it would go up. The fight would soon get even more complicated when another guard would come running in to join it. He'd take pot shots at Glarther with his bow, and while the damage wasn't too frequent, a second marksman would show up and begin to take aim. Soon, Glarther was starting to look like Boromir. 
The fight was soon determined though when one of the guards decided to rush in with his sword. With a few swings from both him and Dion, Glarther was killed. Not all hope was lost though, as Glarther managed to take Dion out with him, showing me that there was some potential here. For fun, I resurrected Glarther just to see how the guards would react, and to see if he would continue on his mission. This idea didn't really work though, so I reverted back to just after Bernadette's death. Trying again, Dion met us at the exact same point, and the two of them duked it out. Sure enough, the archer showed up as well and started to litter Glarther with arrows. Fortunately, he was able to kill Dion this time. I was unsure of how this was going to play out next though, and to my dismay, he rushed right into the archers and began swinging. A third town guard came out of nowhere, and together, all three of them cut down Glarther in the streets. For this next try, I tested out using Superior Convalescence, which heals my target for 20 points for 4 seconds. It's an expert level spell and is equally useful as it is magicka hungry. Dion met us at what I'm coining as Dion's Pass, and the battle began. If you watched my Arena Challenge playthrough, you'll know that I had better luck using lower level casts and spells. The higher level ones sapped up too much of my magicka, and I was pretty much dealing with the exact same problem here. For healing, it's better to be reactive rather than proactive. Dion would hit Glarther too frequently, and I wasn't able to keep up with the demands. Switching back to the regular Convalescent spell, it was a lot easier to manage and heal Glarther. At this point, he was able to kill Dion no problem. But the part he just couldn't get past was the Twin Archers, just at the edge of Dion's pass. Glarther would get in too close, they would take out their swords and overwhelm him with their attacks. At this point, I really started to ramp up with my Guardian Angel roll. For curiosity's sake, I spawned in some lowly bandits and hoped that they would either kill Dion or distract the whole town guard. Dion was way too strong for the bandit though and slew him with one hit. The same went for a bandit hedge wizard, so I decided to spawn in a whole bunch of bandit bowmen. Most of them aggroed onto Dion and it seemed like my plan was working perfectly. That was until Dion specifically targeted Glarther and killed him amongst the chaos. Trying it out with 10 bowmen, the fight was even more messy and disorganized, and I decided to scrap the idea of spawns altogether. For this next try, I was sort of onto something, but there was a fundamental issue with it. I gave myself the spell of Disintegrate Weapon and began casting it on Dion. It worked well and his sword broke, rendering him mostly defenseless. The problem though was that this spell was a part of the Destruction School, so it did count as aggroing slash attacking an NPC for Glarther. In some ways, this fight was harder to watch, as Glarther kept getting knocked down. The fight certainly went on a lot longer, and on the first attempt, another town guard came in right away to shut it down. On the second try, I incorporated Disintegrate Armor into the mix. It was a little hard to tell how much of an effect it was actually having, and to be honest, my time and effort spent doing that meant I wasn't able to heal the Wood Elf. I also made the mistake of taking away the other town guard's bow, as that led to him rushing to Dion's side and killing Glarther with their swords. For this next attempt, I wanted to see what would happen if I advanced in levels a bit. I put myself up to level 10 and got to Dion's pass. This also didn't really work out and actually resulted in a much worse outcome. Glarther could barely do any damage to the town guard, my healing spells practically did nothing for him, and he was hitting Dion for even less damage. I didn't make it very far with this tactic, and it was at this point that I decided to do a slow escalation for this questline. Undergoing a complete do-over, I followed Glarther to his home, he retrieved his battle axe, we went into Bernadette's house, and I body blocked the doorway again. Glarther killed his first target, and we moved through the streets. This time, I toggled the Detect Console command and we moved through them freely. We were still intercepted at Dion's Pass, but the interaction went a lot smoother. Yes? They say that the priests and priestesses of the Chapel of Debella have all been murdered. No one even knows who did it. No! Absolutely. I found this part so funny, as you can see that Dion so desperately wants to kill Glarther, but as soon as he reaches him, his AI gets altered and he turns into a chatterbox rather than a killing machine. Glarther and I get an official escort to Tudius Sextius' home. The first time I made it in here during an alternate attempt, Glarther took on Tudius, but I didn't do a good job at keeping him contained. Due to his house's build, it's a little more difficult to heal Glarther and body block at the same time. If Tudius makes it into the streets, then it's game over. 
So this time I put more emphasis into blocking the doorway and less into healing. After all, Tudius was only using his fists and Glarther had a battle axe. I think you should leave. On Glarther's second attempt, I abused my guardian angel powers and obtained some iron daggers and paintbrushes. Entering inside of Sextius's chambers, I dropped a dagger by his bed, hoping that he would use it during the fight. I then plastered the doorway with paintbrushes. This way, no fighter could leave the room. Toggling detect, the battle began, and this time, I was able to move a lot more freely. Tudius didn't bother picking up the dagger, which was unfortunate. I spam healed Glarther, as to be honest, Tudius was one heck of a hand-to-hand -hand fighter. At one point, Sextius made a break for the door, but got caught in my trap. He tried to run away for a bit, but after giving up on his attempts to flee, Tudius resumed the brawl. He continued to far outperform Glarther, and I continued to work overtime. Soon, Glarther landed the killing blow on Sextius, and that was his second target down. I removed the paintbrushes from the doorway, and together, we exited the home. As soon as we left, Glarther's Bane showed up and tailed him for a bit. Again, I found this part hilarious as you can tell that Dion is so desperately trying to fulfill his life's mission. Yet, due to some changes in the code, he's stuck in limbo. The Emperor and his three sons dead, right under the noses of the Imperial Guard. It's a disgrace. I just don't think about it. The Elder Council will take care of things. Sooner or later. After that conversation, Glarther continued through Dion's pass and entered inside of the Surreal Brothers' backyard. He made his way into their home and as soon as I went on in, he was nowhere to be found. I looked around for a bit until finally, I discovered that David, Gaston, and Glarther were upstairs. David immediately descended down and Glarther followed. I spent too much of my time isolating Gaston with paintbrushes, I didn't even realize that the other two left the house. I tried to track them down, but couldn't find them anywhere. Doing it over again, this time I blocked off the backyard gate with some paintbrushes in case David decided to leave this way. Inside the home, I littered the doorway connecting the vestibule and dining room with paintbrushes. David descends the stairs, Glarther on his tail. I blocked off the upper stairwell to prevent Gaston from joining the fight. When everything was ready, I toggled detect and the battle began. If anything, David Surreal was an even worse fighter than Tudius and Bernadette, and it didn't even really seem like Glarther needed much of my help. Glarther throws down the killing swing, and David is defeated. I quickly checked to see if Gaston was bugging out upstairs, but he was actually nowhere to be found. As I was removing the brushes, in the best and most desperate way, Dion enters inside of the home and strikes up a conversation with Glarther. Steered clear of them. Horrid beasts. I hate the things. Good day. David's corpse clearly behind us, and Glarther's axe bloodied, he acts like nothing happened. And I absolutely loved it. The conversation ends and the two men go on their way. With AI detection still off, I followed Glarther around for a bit to see what he would do. After his hard-fought victory, it seemed like he just wanted to stay home and stand in the corner of his bedroom. Waiting a bit longer, he left his home and wandered around town, eventually making it to one of Skingrad's bridges and loitering around. As soon as I toggled detection back on, like hounds to dinner, the town guard came rushing in and slew Glarther. It was already obvious, but it just further proved that Glarther was never meant to make it this far. He could maybe take out Bernadette on his own, but he would have never been able to make it to Tudius or David without meeting superior resistance. Wanting to step things up a bit, I restarted over and went through the motions again with Bernadette. Attempting to find creative ways to get through this, I first used console commands to kill Glarther's opposition. It was kind of a cool scene to see them drop dead, but it was ultimately no different from toggling AI detection. The next thing I tried out was being Glarther's personal bodyguard. I gave myself impeccable blade skills as well as a Daedric longsword. This unfortunately did break the rules of the playthrough, but I wanted to see where it could get me. Glarther and I took out Dion in no time, and after the deed was done, he even had the audacity to shame me for it. By the gods, how could you do such a thing? Getting past Dion was the easy part. The next part was tricky though. Because I landed the first hit on him, the guards decided to try and accost me rather than Glarther. Resisting arrest, Glarther managed to walk past them undetected. It was a beautiful sight, but it didn't last long as I was quickly struck down. Attempting the bridge again, some guards were waiting for us to cross over. 
They came running in at me, but if I backed up enough, they would quickly switch their attention to Glarther. While he was taking the heat, I would swoop in from behind and eliminate all of his attackers. All the meanwhile, healing him at the same time. Of course for me, it was easier said than done, and either Glarther or myself would end up dying on this bridge. Soon, we were actually able to make it past the bridge's defense. I made the mistake though of poking my head out too far from Sextius' home and aggroed onto another guard. Glarther made his way inside of the house, and I was stuck outside defending it. I cut through the guards and was able to make it into the home, but I thought for sure at this point, Glarther would be dead. Ascending up the stairs and into Tudius' chambers, the scene there shocked me. Sextius laid lifeless on his bed, and Glarther was nowhere to be found. Ecstatic and slightly worried, I rushed out of the house in an attempt to find him. I looked all over the city, striking down more guards, until finally, I saw Glarther's corpse out in the middle of the town's walkway. It appears as though he wasn't able to make it to the surreal household and died against one of the guards. Trying again from the bridge section, this time I kept my body tucked away behind the home so there would be no line of sight with the guards. Entering inside, we made our way upstairs and Tudius met Glarther out in the hallway. This was bad though as when Sextius had enough, he would just run out of the house and circle around town. So I took matters into my own hands and went ahead of Glarther. Sneaking upstairs, I went inside of Tudius' chambers and waited for him to enter inside. After the Wood Elf stepped foot into the room, I blocked the way out with paintbrushes and the battle commenced. It went the exact same as while using console commands. Tudius was the better fighter and I worked double time to keep Glarther alive. Soon though, the killing blow was delivered and Glarther and I could continue onwards. Exiting Sextius' home, we backtracked through Dion's pass and made it into the surreal home no problem. I quickly placed down the paintbrushes in the entranceway and went upstairs. Garther had already gone all the way up to the third floor and straight for David's chambers. Letting him inside, he killed David in record time. It seemed like barely a challenge for him, and once done, he nonchalantly left. Gaston came out of his chambers, saw two men leave his brother's room with bloodied weapons, and told us to get out because we were trespassing. This is your last warning. Get out or I'll call the guards and have you arrested. Exiting the home, Glarther completed his quest of killing his three opposers. He was able to do it with the use of toggling detect, and he was able to do it with me aiding him in combat against the guards. But I still haven't been able to successfully complete this with only using buffs on Glarther and non-aggressive spells on his attackers. At this point though, it has been proven that he can take out Bernadette, Tudius, and David with the help of a healer. There was one more thing that I wanted to try before throwing in the towel. Paralysis, Demoralize, and Frenzy spells are all under the Illusion School. Counter to what I initially thought, casting these spells on the guards were freebies, as it wouldn't result in them aggroing onto me. Fearful Gaze and Touch of Rage didn't really help me out too much, but the Paralysis spell worked wonders. Dion would be incapacitated for 3 seconds, while Glarther got in there and chopped away at him. As soon as he would get up, I could cast the spell again, and this cycle would continue until he was beaten. Issues would soon arise though when it came to the two archers. I couldn't multitask healing Glarther and paralyzing his attackers. My magicka would run out too quickly and would render me helpless. At one point though, I paralyzed Dion and Glarther decided to move on from him. It gave me a further idea that I also wanted to try out. During the next run, I ran ahead of Glarther and tried to stop Dion in his tracks. It worked at first, but I wasn't ready for Dion's resilience. I just decided to spam the paralysis spell and soon, Glarther moved on again. He was met with the wall of archers though and my spell casting was put into overdrive. I juggled between paralyzing each guard, rushing over to the next man that had just stood up. This was futile though as my magicka quickly ran out and the guards swarmed Glarther. On the next attempt though, something strange happened. Dion didn't run up to his pass. In fact, he was nowhere to be found. We made it to the north side of town, just outside of Tudius' home, but we were met by three guards. I tried to juggle healing and paralyzing, but again, it was of no use. To be honest, I'm not really that skilled at this game and its combat features. I don't know if it's within my ability to get Glarther safely to his target's home without using console commands or combat. I do believe it's possible and I think I was on the right track with the paralysis spell and paintbrushes, but unfortunately, I just couldn't get it done. So this challenge playthrough is considered failed. 
Regardless, I really did enjoy myself, and this run really did feel the most chaotic and raw out of the few that I've already done. If any of you have ever attempted this before or are going to attempt it and are or were successful, please feel free to share your strategies down below. On the screen right now are the next few challenge playthroughs that I'll be trying out, and if you have any new ones that you'd like to add, comment them below. Until next time, keep on adventuring.